tech surveillance and control. We are learning of the many techno techniques that the Biden administration has been using against the American people in their campaign to suppress truth and amplify lies, especially during and around major elections. Yes, we continue to see that. This week, Twitter CEO Elon Musk released more troubling information about the ways the administration has directed social media to censor American citizens and amplify its version of the Biden laptop and the evidence of influence peddling on it, COVID-19 and its handling of it, and the Russia collusion lie, which the Fed pursued, the FBI pursued, and secured FISA warrants to spy on Trump officials, even as they knew there was absolutely no truth to it. Independent journalist Matt Taibbi joins me now with the very latest batch of troubling files. Matt, it's good to see you. Thanks very much for your work around this all of this time. Thanks very much for having me, Maria. Appreciate so it. So talk to us about the main revelations from all of these Twitter files. There's been a lot. I want you to suppress it into what's most important for us. I think the major revelation of the Twitter files so far is that we've discovered an elaborate uh, bureaucracy of what you might call public-private censorship. Uh, basically, companies like Twitter had a system by which they received tens of thousands of requests for action on various accounts typically through the DHS and the FBI, but these requests were coming from basically every agency in the government. We've seen them from the HHS, uh, from, the, uh, from the Treasury, from the DOD, uh, even from the CIA, and they will send basically long lists of accounts in Excel spreadsheet files and uh, ask for action on those accounts. And in many cases, uh, Twitter is complying. Yeah, I mean, we've been talking about the fact that the FBI had a task force of, uh, of 80 FBI agents or 80 people at the FBI who were tasked with just dealing with social media, but it was many more than that, right? You're estimating up to 1,000 people throughout, throughout government. Right, because with that foreign influence task force only refers to the people in the FBI, DHS, and the uh, Director of National Intelligence Office. Uh, but actually, this includes people in a, in a variety of agencies, both federal and state. Uh, we've seen requests from basically all 50 states. Most of those go through uh, DHS to, um, uh, to Twitter. So uh, I would estimate the personnel somewhere between 500 and 1,000 people. That's just based on what we've seen so far. Uh, it may be more than that. Unbelievable how extensive this is. And the FBI actually paid Twitter, right? What were they paying $3.5 million for? So that's a really interesting question, Maria. We found one uh, incredible email from former FBI general counsel, uh, Jim Baker. This was reporter Michael Schellenberger who found this. And it's uh, essentially uh, celebrating that the FBI had paid $3.4 uh, million for, quote unquote, processing requests. So in other words, all those requests that were coming through to Twitter and we see all the email traffic talking about what a burden it was for the company to process all these requests. Um, that's what the money was for. It was for them to look at all these, these requests for uh, content moderation and censorship that were coming from all these different agencies. Unbelievable. And some of the requests uh, were just incredible. I want you to tell us some about those requests, because at some, at some point, some of the, you know, lawmakers like a Dianne Feinstein or an Adam Schiff would say, you know, just shut these people's accounts down, period. The FBI would say, these are the people, these are the accounts that we think are, you know, uh, well, you tell me what they said. They just wanted them shut down. But what are the other requests that the FBI was making? What did they want to know from Twitter? Yeah, it's funny. As, as I was reading these tens of thousands of emails, we would put them into different buckets. So this might be a First Amendment particular uh, issue over here. Uh, this might be a revolving door question over here. But then over here, we had a bucket called improper asks. And there you might see something like the FBI asking for user identification or IP addresses or handles, and in some cases, even things like geolocation of individual accounts. Now, the problem is we don't see always see the other side uh, of these transactions, but we can definitely see the government asking for these things. Uh, so these are things that are they're not entitled to, uh, usually without a subpoena or without a warrant, but they're asking for them anyway because they have a very close relationship with these companies. Uh, and in some cases, we're not talking about a few accounts. We're talking about thousands of accounts where they're asking for handles or IP addresses or, 
other information. Unbelievable. And that, I think, is very dangerous. Yeah. Very dangerous, of course. This is stunning. This is right out of the Communist China playbook. Matt, before you go real quick, what happened when Twitter said, oh, well, we can't, we can't identify Russian bots. We can't identify that this was actually Russian disinformation. That's not what we're finding. Then what did they do to pressure Twitter? Well, the usual means is uh, they would go to, <laughs> to their friends in the, in the corporate press and uh, Twitter would be hammered by, you know, uh, mainstream press organizations who would say, basically, Twitter is not doing enough to combat foreign interference. As you know, because you were reporting on it at the time, uh, Congressman Devin Nunes uh, got an extraordinary amount of abuse because it was claimed that the uh, hashtag release the memo was boosted by Russian bots. But we now know, based on stuff that we've seen internally, in these emails that there were no Russian bots, that Twitter was actually telling senators like Richard, Blum Richard Blumenthal, don't do it, you're going to look foolish, and they did it anyway. And, and when they didn't get what they wanted, they went to CNN, The New York Times, Washington Post, and they got stories manufactured against Twitter. This is stunning. Matt, we've got to have you back on another day when we're not so tight. Thank you so much for being here. Matt Taibbi, great work. Thanks so much, Maria. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.